radio play for today, Dancing Lady, is based on a true life story appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all Hearst Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Dancing Lady is a production of the General Broadcasting Company. Every morning and every evening, the air resounds with the shrill cries of the newsboys, like human broadcasting stations, telling what the publisher has gathered. News and events of the day. Like a show window, the headlines display the features of the printed page. And behind every black type caption lies a story of human interest to you. Have you ever wondered about the stories appearing in your newspaper? Then come with us to a newspaper office. Hey, give me Feature editor. Huh? What? No, I'm not interested. Listen, lady, I can't help it if your canary bird has learned to open the door of his cage. I'm not interested. And what's more, our readers aren't interested. Of all the... Hello, operator. Say, this is a newspaper wire, not the SPCA. Oh, hello, Holden. Oh, hello, chief. Taking your spare minute? Yeah, Holden, what's in your mind? We have the cable on that big Paris story. Okay. What's it all about? Great stuff. Millionaire's son and his dancer sweetheart. Name is Henri Devine. 26-year-old son of a Paris carpet manufacturer. Well, it seems that one night, Henri and a friend went to see a show. After the performance, they went to the stage door. Wasn't she wonderful, Edmund? Oh, she was all right. All right? Why, she was marvelous, divine. She was just one of the chorus. She was the whole show. You know, uh, you've gone to the theater too much, Edmund. That's what's wrong with you. Your artistic sense has been dulled. On the contrary, Henri, it's raised my critical standards. Powered it, you mean. Why, that girl was glorious. She didn't dance. She floated across the stage. And what I... Oh, come now, on. Oh, oh now, oh, Edmund, oh. you must agree that her eyes were the most beautiful you've ever seen. Makeup. That's what made them look that way. Hey, what's got into you, old man? You've always shied clear of women. If one only smiled at you, you blushed up into the roots of your hair. And now, just because a shapely dancer... Ah, was... you do admit one charm. That slipped out, didn't it? As well, you didn't intend I should know she'd made any impression. She's my wrestling. Henri, what's happened to you? Can't you see? I'm in love. In love? Yes, why not? Why shouldn't I be in love? No reason at all. Of course there isn't. I'm only human. Edmund, where are we? Where are we? Yes. Why, we're standing at the stage door of the theater in seat. Right. And whom are we waiting to see? A blonde chorus girl. Wrong, Edmund. We're waiting to see the future Madame Divine. Henri. You must be insane. I am insane. Insanely in love. Oh, now, listen, old friend. Your father would cut you off with other Frank if you ever did such a foolish thing. You mustn't think of marrying her. Now, come along and get away from here. I... I wonder if she'll go to heaven. Why, when I only think of asking her, my knees tremble and my tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth. Edmund, you had experience in becoming acquainted with actresses. How shall I go about it? How shall I say to her? If you know what's good for you, you'll come with me right now. You're right. I had that experience in getting acquainted with girls like her, and it's just for that reason that I'm not going to have anything to do with this folly. I want to take my word for it. This girl will ruin you. I want suggestions, not a lecture. Will you come home with me? No. And if you're not going to help me, you might as well go along by yourself. Very well, Henri. Good night. Go, Taxi. Taxi. I'm sorry, but I already have an engagement. Uh, Mansell? Uh, did you speak to me? Well, forgive me for being so bold, but I admired your performance so much this evening, I, I couldn't leave without telling you. I please out here. Uh, would you, uh, dare I hope that you will honor me by taking supper with me some night? Why, uh, what's the matter with tonight? Oh, well, you, you just said I, I thought... I had another engagement. <laughs> Why, I had to get rid of those men somehow. Then you accept my invitation? Well... Why not, Monsieur? Splendid. Where shall we go, Mansell? Uh, my name's Margot. Margot. A name as beautiful as a donor. How charming. I know just the face it goes, Monsieur. Well, Chief, Margot not only knew where to take him, but also how. And she took him plenty. His old man has cut off his allowance. Sonny boy sold his limousine. Borrowed 200,000 francs from his mother. When that money was gone... Henri turned to stealing to satisfy Margot's love of finery and jewels. One night, when she returned from the theater... What kept you so late tonight? Where have you been? None of your business. Did you raise some more money? Money? Money, money. That's all you ever talk about. That's all you ever think about. Where in heaven's name can I get any more? What about that tidy little fortune your grandfather has? 
I've asked him to lend me some money, and he's refused. I can't ask him again just now, and he so will. Well, you know you're his favorite grandson. He'll leave everything to you when he dies, and that probably isn't far away. Margot, how can you talk like that? I love my grandfather too much to even think of a legacy. Oh, you do. Well, listen to me, Henri de Dean. You'll have to get that money somehow and get it quick. Why? What is it you want now that must be bought in such a hurry? Railroad tickets. You're leaving here as soon as you get the money. Leaving here? What for? Have you forgotten the pearl necklace? Oh, dear, you don't mean... Yes. The police have been picked up with you, stole it from the movie shop. And they're looking for you. They'll never arrest me. There must be no stain on the name of the Vince. Henri, what are you going to do? Will you come back here? Henri! Where's my gun? What have you done with it, Margot? Don't be a fool, Henri. I've been a fool, but I won't be one any longer. Where is that gun? I've hidden it. Where? Tell me at once. I'll get it and... Oh, no, you won't. You have nerve enough to kill yourself. Why, oh, you haven't even nerve enough to ask your grandfather for some money. Henri, you don't have to shoot yourself to get out of this. Oh, what else is there for me to do? I'm ruined. Oh, pull yourself together, Henri. I know where you can get some money just as easily as you got that necklace. No. No, no, I, I won't listen to you any longer. You've done nothing but bring me misery and trouble ever since I've known you. I turned thief for you once to satisfy your mercenary cravings, but I won't again. I'm through, I tell you. Through. Do you hear? Are you? Come here. Take me in your arms. Oh. Now say that. Oh, Why do I love you so? I, I can't refuse you anything. What do you want me to do? Listen, no. How is it so far, boss? Good stuff. Go right ahead, Holton. What's the rest of it? Well, Margot's plan was for Henri to pose as a gigolo in one of the Ritchie nightclubs, make a date with the most bejeweled woman in the place, and then rob her. Well, Margot and Henri go to a place called the Red Door. He picked the right place. Just look at all the sparklers. Not all right. Can't go through with it. Oh, yes, you can. Look over there. See that woman over that table? Why, her coat must be worth at least 75,000 francs. And that ring must have cost another 20,000. And look at that vanity she's carrying. It's worth about 10,000 more. All right. Get going. That is your victim. Victim? Oh, don't say that. Well, go on over and get acquainted with her. But now go away. This is absolutely our last chance, Henri. We must leave Paris in the morning. Now go on over. Very well. I'll try. Good evening, madame. Oh, oh uh, good evening. Madame is unescorted, I see. May I offer myself the evening? Why, thank you. It would be a pleasure to have you act as my escort. Uh, 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 please sit down. Madame, honestly. <laughs> this sort of thing is new to me. My husband never brings me to these places when we come to Paris. Well, I'm not surprised. This is the sort of place where a husband wishes to come to be alone with hostesses. <laughs> oh, you're very clever, monsieur. Um, uh, monsieur... Permit me to introduce myself. I am the Count Jules de Fromage. Oh. Oh, it is I who am honored, your grace. Oh, not at all, madame, I assure you. Would you care to see some of the nightlife of Paris and some of the other places? Oh, is it safe? You know, I've heard so much about these wicked resorts. Oh, they're <laughs> grossly exaggerated, madame. And you may rest assured you're in the hands of an expert guide. Oh, I am sure of that, your grace. Your charm and poise tell me so. Madame... Oh, what a graceful bow. Oh, if my husband would only reduce enough so he could bend in the middle. Oh, so shall we start on our tour? Why, yes, of course, but I, I must phone my hotel first to say I shall be late. I'll meet you in the reception room. As Madame commands. Well? The plan is working. I'm to meet her in the reception room. Good. Now, here, take this with you. What's this? A file of curtain? Well, you might call it that. Got a sweet stickish odor which has the power to cause sleep. Horrible. Good death. Oh, no. No, no. Here, take this back. No. Nothing must go wrong with our plan, Henri. A few drops of this on your handkerchief and your job is done all the easier. Yes, but oh, the problem... Stop your noise and get out of the reception room. You mustn't let her get away. All right, Margot. But this is the last crime I shall commit. If you pull the job right, there won't even be any need for another. Meet you back at the apartment when it's over. Good luck. Now, uh, according to the dope I have here, Chief, Henri takes the dame away from the red door and up to some hotel suite. 
where he goes ahead and slips to the knockout drop. Then he takes all her expensive jewelry and the high-priced coat and beats it back to little Margot, who's been wearing a groove in the carpet back at the apartment. You're back, Henri. Yes, I'm back. And you got the stuff? <laughs> That's the way to do things, Henri. Did you use the drop? Yes. Wasn't it simple? Too simple. I never dreamt it was so easy. So wait till she wakes up. She'll get the surprise of her life. She isn't going to wake up. What? Oh, no. I feel Henry, why you didn't... Yes. Yes, we... We got to the suite. While taking off my coat, I, I managed to pour some of the chloroform on my handkerchief. Then as I helped her off with her wraps, I pressed it against her mouth and nose. Yes, go on. Well, when she ceased struggling, I took all those things and... And then... Then I went over to where she lay. Huh? Well, she wasn't breathing. Oh. There was no pulse to be found. Oh, yes. Where are you going, Margot? I'm getting out of here. That's because you're fool enough to have given that woman an overdose of chloroform. I'm not taking any chances of getting hung for it. Aren't you? Well, Henri, will you stay where you are? Stop. Are you crazy? Don't you dare lock that door. What, what are you going to do with that key? Give it here. I'll show you. What? Well, you've thrown it out of the window. Of course, my dear. You got me into this mess and you'll stay in it with me. Oh. You hear? You'll stay in it with me. Every crime I've committed, I've done it for you. Oh. Well, if there's any paying to be done, you'll pay your share. And I'm going to be sure you pay. Oh. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Yeah. And uh, they're both in jail awaiting trial. I'm checking on the names and places. And in the meantime, mm. I'll get going on the frills. All right, Holmes. Rush to me just as soon as you're through. Feature editor. Oh, your canary just closed the door of his cage. Am I interested in that? Oh, sure. Hey, listen, lady. Tell him to write me a hundred words on how he does it, and I'll not only print it, but I'll give him a byline. <laughs> to read all the interesting details of the millionaire's son and his dancing lady in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly under the title Found Floating in Her Pompeian Bath. The American Weekly is a magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. This is Wentworth Announcing and turning the microphone over to your own station announcer. <laughs>
today's radio play is based on another true story appearing in next Sunday's issue of the American Weekly. The magazine distributed with all first Sunday newspapers from coast to coast. Romantic Rovers is a production of the General Broadcasting Company. October 26, 1788. His Majesty's ship Bounty, which had been sent to the Pacific Islands for breadfruit, dropped anchor at Tahiti. To the men who sailed the Bounty under the tyrannical command of Captain William Bly, Tahiti, with its fantastically shaped mountains, waterfalls like threads of silver flung from the cliffs, shady groves, slender coconut trees, and the comely and amiable native women, seemed a veritable paradise. For six months, the ships, the ships and crew stayed there, and then came the order to sail for England. The men made the most of their last day on the beautiful island. One of the sailors, George Young, who had fallen deeply in love with a Tahitian maid, spent his last hours ashore by taking a walk to the shady glade with his native sweetheart. Are you tired, Tonda? No, no tired. That's good. I wanted to see our waterfall just once more before I sail for home. Where you go? Tomorrow, at sunrise. And they all know where to go. Oh, when I don't want to go either, Pandora. No go. Stay. I wish I could with all my heart. But I can't. <laughs> 